Access Minnesota, issues that matter to you. Access Minnesota brings you the newsmakers and the stories that shape our everyday lives with analysis from University of Minnesota faculty experts. Welcome to Access Minnesota. Whether you consider yourself a fashionista or not, fashion is a part of everyday life. Whether it's high-end designer couture or generic brand t-shirts, fashion has the ability to both reflect social norms and to challenge cultural taboos. Throughout history, clothing trends mark significant political and social changes, along with changes in technology, marketing, and the economy. With that in mind, this month's Access is devoted to the theme of fashion and shopping malls. We'll explore the effects of the recession on retail and consider the future of the retail industry and the retail infrastructures left behind. We'll also look at the thriving local fashion scene and see what trends have inspired local designers. But first, we begin with Lucy Dunn, an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. Dunn's work combines technology and textiles for a fashion that makes a statement beyond just aesthetics. I'm Dr. Lucy Dunn, and I'm an assistant professor in the apparel design program here at the University of Minnesota in the College of Design. Um, and I teach apparel design, standard basic apparel design in, uh, for careers in fashion or in protective clothing or in any area really of apparel. But my research is in wearable technologies or smart clothing. And I do a lot of work that is related to uh, monitoring the body, trying to sense bi body signals and uh, record maybe the, the activity of a person or um, the physiological status of a person. So here I have my running mannequin Sisyphus, um, who is currently testing a bend sensor that monitors his, the flexion of his knee down here. Um, so it's a little optical bend sensor, and as it bends, um, the resistance of the sensor changes, and I record that and map it to the movement of his knee. So you could imagine an application like a smart knee brace that could tell you when you've bent your knee too far or could help you with rehabilitation exercises. Uh, we use the same kind of sensor in a vest like this uh, to measure seated spinal posture. So in that application, the sensor would, would be a lot longer, and it would go from the nape of your neck down to about your waist. And then as you sit at your computer or work in a seated position, it would be able to remind you to sit up or to help you to monitor the way that you're sitting over long periods of time to help maybe avoid uh, spinal problems that are associated with bad posture. In addition to sensing, um, one of the other important elements of smart clothing is what we call actuators or output. Um, if the sensor provides the input to a system, the actuator is the output or what the garment does in response to the sensor information. Um, and one of the actuators I work with a lot is uh, a little vibrating motor, which is similar to what would be inside of your cell phone. Um, and we use that in a variety of ways. We use it here um, to provide an aesthetic effect as well as a, a sensory effect that would feel a little bit like a vibrating massage maybe. Um, in this jacket, we use it in the shoulder pads as what we call a vibrotactile display. So if you, your phone has a vibrotactile display, which is the, the vibrate function, um, but all the phone can really tell you is that something is happening and it wants your attention. Um, and it doesn't really have the ability to tell you what that is or what the message might be that's coming in. So if we use more than one vibrating motor in a little array over the shoulders, then we have more uh, points of input and can actually display something like a pattern um, or you know an indicator that you might be able to associate with a specific person or a specific message or even a level of urgency. Um, so this jacket has the tactile display and it also has some input buttons on the inside um, where you could uh, interact with the, the device. So maybe you could tell your phone not now or tell me again in a minute or say yes or something like that. Um, we also use it over here um, as an aesthetic effect to add kind of a kinetic element to an aesthetic garment. Um, so in this evening gown, the little flower has um, a vibrating motor that will flutter the, the petals and make the little stamens move a little bit when it's turned on, just like that. So it's a very powerful little actuator that we use in a variety of ways, both aesthetic and functional. In this jacket, we've augmented the technologies that exist in standard clothing with electronic technologies to make it function better. Um, it's designed for cyclists in the winter. So in addition to 
things like this, which would be sort of standard a retroreflective trim, um, which keeps cyclists safe on the road. We've included this electroluminescent piping, which actually generates light um, to protect the cyclist maybe a little bit better. So the cyclist would have its own flashing light um, on the body, in addition to the reflected light from car headlights. Um, it also has, in the back, it has a, a heat pad that generates electric heat in addition to preserving the wearer's body heat to keep you maybe just a little bit warmer than a regular jacket would. Um, and all of these systems are driven by sensor input. So here on the sleeves we have two uh, light sensors that would detect when it's dark enough to need this extra light and then activate the light system. And inside the jacket there are two temperature sensors that detect when the, the wearer might need a little bit of extra heat from the heat pad.